Hey everyone, just uh, wanted to do another quick video for you all today. Um, I've done a few videos recently focusing on how we can check our BIM data, um, specifically Kobe data against items and how we can validate that using software like Celebri. Um, but we've had a, a load of feedback that whilst that's great, there's a lot of people out there that don't have Celebri um, and they're reliant on tools like Navisworks, so on and so forth to, to do their coordination. Um, and that's absolutely fine. And, and actually, there are still workflows that you can follow inside of Navisworks to be able to um, check and validate both your model geometry and your information inside of your model. So I thought I'd just give you a quick overview of how we can use Navisworks to validate Kobe data, FM data, inside of our Revit models in this instance. So I'm going to use the same model if you've already seen my, uh, my Celebri-based uh, video. Um, and once again, in here, we, we basically have um, a number of assets, um, all of my furniture, doors, windows, so on and so forth. And I'm just going to point out that uh, this door here, if I select this Kobe asset and have a look in my properties on my left-hand side, we have defined that we want Kobe, and it's started to get information filled out. Now, what's really important about Kobe, um, and I won't explain it fully today because well, it's a much greater conversation, but um, it's important that these are not left blank. If you have a value that is not relevant at that point in time, it must contain a N slash A value, and that's really important, and you'll see why shortly. But we can use Navisworks to validate everything that we have because on this door, we've got some data, and I've just done the opposite on this window. For example, kobe.component.description on this window has been filled out. kobe.component.description on this door is blank. I'm just going to save this file and head over into Navisworks and just play the role of a, of a coordinator now. Um, and just uh, let's just take out the cache file so it's nice and fresh. Um, of the coordinator, and I want to validate what Kobe data I have in my model, where my assets are, um, and if they are missing any data that we are expecting to see. And this is really easy in Navisworks um, using search sets. Search sets in Navisworks are, are very commonly used. If you're a Navisworks user, you'll be well used to using search sets already. Um, but typically, people are just using these to say, well, go and select all of my walls or my partitions or all of my steel or columns or whatever it might be so that their clash detections or their timeline of work is a lot quicker. Um, I want to push the fact that actually using these search sets, these sophisticated search sets, we can really quickly and really easily validate what we have inside the model. So here is my Navisworks set, um, file set. Um, and I'm just going to come up to the ribbon and hit on find items. I'm just going to dock find items just on the left hand side just because I'm going to be going between there and my properties window. Um, and what I'm going to do to begin with is just come and select this door that we saw over in Revit. And if we select the door and have head over and look into our properties, we can see that the door under the element properties has a number of different properties containing a number of our Kobe dot properties. You'll notice that we do not have Kobe dot description dot sorry Kobe dot component dot description. That's because it didn't have any value. Much like when you export things to IFC, if a property doesn't have a value, it will kind of be ignored by these other systems. If we go and check out this window here, we can see that it does have Kobe dot component dot description. So what we can do to begin with is say, okay, Navisworks, firstly show me all of my Kobe assets. So using our find items, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and just expand some of these columns a little bit here. Our category is linking to the type of property that we're looking at. So again, for these components, if I want to define whether or not it's Kobe, I can select this external wall, go into my properties. They're always under element. And in this case, I have a property called Kobe, which is no, because a wall is not a maintainable asset in this particular um, model and in general. Um, but Kobe is no. So I can use my find items to say my category is element, my property that I'm looking for is Kobe, and I'm looking for a condition equaling yes. If I say find all and then use that in conjunction with my hide unselected, that will show me, in this instance, everything that the client has defined as 
maintainable asset or Kobe asset in the building. We have a couple of curtain walls in there with some windows in. We have our doors and windows, all of our light fittings, fixtures, so on and so forth. So they are all defined as being Kobe. I could take this and just export this to save that as a, a save set so that I've always got the ability to very quickly say, go and find all of my Kobe items. But I want to take this a step further. I want to validate that out of all of those Kobe defined components that they have the relevant properties. So let's do one that exists first. I want to define that all Kobe components have a correctly defined name. So we're going to say category is element, the property is Kobe.component.name, and the condition is going to be defined in this case. That means that the property exists. So you're not actually checking what that value is. If I say find all and then hide unselected again, we should notice that in this case, all of those individual components do have a component name. You could then take this a step further and say, once again, rather than is defined, we could then say, okay, element, kobe.component.name, and then you can start saying equals, if you've got a specific requirement, or contains, if you're following certain naming conventions, the, the name of that component would need to be quite specific. So you could, uh, you could say that, make sure the name contains or starts with something or ends with something, um, so on and so forth. So we've got the ability to come in and start really defining exactly what we're expecting to see inside of our Kobe assets. If I flip this around now, again, remember to export those out so that you can use them at a later date. I could just hit export, save that somewhere as an XML file. The likelihood is you would have a folder with all of your Kobe validation rules in there. From here, I'm just going to switch this around and say, go and show me all of my Kobe elements that do not have a component description. So show me everything where it's undefined. Find all. And you'll notice that now all of my assets by this one window are selected. That means that all of those assets currently selected are incorrect. They do not have a kobe.component.description. And again, you can start using your hide unselected or hide selected tools to really start defining where your problems lie. And in this case, all of these components need to go back into your authoring tool, in this case Revit, and we would need to update all of those properties. The fact that they're undefined, they don't have any value in there, so the property doesn't actually exist. If they were defined and they had a correct n slash a, and you wanted to identify those, you could say, show me anything where we have n slash a. And again, you'd go and hit find all. And in this case, we don't have any that say n slash a, so it tells us so. Each one of these find items rule sets, we can export out to a folder and save them as a given name so that we can very quickly use them time and time again inside of our other models. Using this workflow, it's really easy to start making sure that the data that we have inside of our model is correct and it is as we would expect it to be. Again, the main thing here, the main point is using Navisworks, select your items, use your properties, find out where the property sits with regards to its category, look for the property, and then start grabbing its value. Different properties sit in different locations. For example, our component, our Kobe.component properties will always sit under element because they're instance. Our component or Kobe.type, sorry, will sit under Revit type because they're type properties, so on and so forth. But I really just wanted to create a short video to explain that, you know, whilst there are tools out there that do this in a, in a more automated fashion, once we go through the process once in Navisworks and we have those rules configured and set up, we can very easily validate the, the quality of our Kobe data directly inside of Navisworks itself. And that's any version of Navisworks, whether it's manage or simulate, doesn't matter because we're not using Class Detective. And again, remember, we're coordinating. So once you've found those components, which we have a problem with, and we find them, and we change our view to match what we're after, and then maybe we've gone on to add a revision cloud or whatever it is to to highlight what the problem is, and maybe we've added some text on there to say no Kobe 
dot component dot description defined at all. We can then start using Navisworks other functionality to maybe go in and start saving some viewpoints. So I could save that viewpoint. I could say Kobe dot component dot description. Maybe put that into a folder called Kobe validation. And we could start bringing all of those essentially find unhide or, un, uh, or hide unselected to start building up our um, our viewpoints. We could then use a plugin like um, BIM Collab or BIM Track or BCF -er, um, to be able to create a BIM collaboration um, format file um, to be able to send that directly back into Revit so that the designer can actually see the components rather than getting a dumb report. So. Um, you know, really useful functionality. Navisworks is a fantastic coordination tool, and using these little little tips, you can really get that information validation working the way that you want. Um, so short and sweet, but really hope that was helpful. Any questions? Leave us a comment. Um, drop us a message. And uh, until next time, thank you very much.